Saucony said that this is their best super shoe, but do our testers and I think this is the best they have to offer? The release of Saucony's Endorphin Elite coincides with the brand's 125th anniversary. Saucony's development team took the best parts of its Endorphin Pro shoes, 1, 2, and 3, and the Endorphin Pro Plus, creating its best super shoe yet. What makes this the ultimate Saucony super shoe? One of our testers, Trevor, who had tested the shoe, was going to race in it at the San Antonio Rock and Roll Half Marathon. He opted to wear another shoe instead, unsure about its legality. We spoke with the Saucony development team, who confirmed that it was only 40 millimeters. At 40 millimeters, the Endorphin Elite just passes the World Athletics regulations. So Trevor, you can race in this shoe. The Elite is the same weight as the Pro 3. It is 7.3 ounces for men, 6.1 ounces for women, making it slightly heavier than the Pro Plus, which is really like a marathon shoe and a track flats clothing. It also has the same drop as the Pro 3 and the Pro Plus at eight millimeters. <laughs> Sorry. The Elite's midsole foam is Power Run HG. It's a supercritical PIBA foam. In fact, HG stands for highest grade. It is a lot more responsive than Saucony's previous racing shoes. The Power Run HG makes the shoe ever more responsive, higher rebound, you feel like you are the Tasmanian devil when you're running in the shoe. The carbon fiber plate in the Endorphin Elite is different than the previous Pros and Pro Plus. It has a slotted fork shape. I wish I could show you guys in here, but we're not gonna cut into it today. The fork-like shape works with the midsole foam by providing aggressive toe-off and working with the curved geometry of the shoe, creating a speed roll effect with its slightly curved shape. To shave off some weight, Saucony cut out some parts of the shoe. And if you look at it closely, you can see that it has some cutouts, which also saves on weight and adds more breathability. The upper is less traditional. Unlike standard mesh, it is more open and it kind of reminds me of the Pro 3, which also had a lot of cutouts on the tongue and on the sides. For a more secure fit, you can see that there is a saddle that wraps around, which you can see on the bottom of the shoe, right on top of the carbon fiber plate. Compared to other shoes, I run in the Pro Plus, the Pro 3. The Elite feels snappy. To put it bluntly, running in the shoe feels like you're wearing rocking chairs on your feet, meaning that you feel like you are swaying as you're running, but unlike a rocking horse, you're going at what feels like a world record pace. So I have yet to run in the Alpha Fly but our tester Trevor said that the Endorphin Elite is the best contender against what is believed to be the fastest shoe. I raced in the shoe at the Miami Half Marathon this past February. This shoe is propulsively responsive. My only jab at the shoe is unfortunately its narrow toe box. I ended up racing Boston with the Endorphin Pro Plus, PRing with bloody toenails, which was not really cool. Same thing almost happens with these shoes, except no blood, but lots of friction on my pinky toes. Because of its narrow fit, wide fit runners, beware. Compared to other shoes, and I've raced in a couple, like I said before, the Pro 3, the Pro Plus, the original Vaporfly, when I mention that these shoes give you aggressive toe off, these shoes are just plain old aggressive. You just feel like a mad runner when you're racing in these shoes. So if you want to put on the brakes, give yourself some space. Now, Saucony said that this is their best super shoe. Do our testers and I think this is the best they have to offer? Actually, yeah. This shoe, it really does feel like the ultimate racing shoe with its tall but legal stack height. As much as I like this shoe, I still like the Pro Plus for its lightweight, nimble feel, and agility. But if you still want that aggressive, macho racer, the Endorphin Elite is the shoe to go with. The price of the Endorphin Elite is $275, which is a little steep. The Pro 3 was $225 and the Pro Plus was $250. Is it worth the price difference? Yes. Counting in the new features with the high-grade foam, the new slotted carbon fiber plate, and just the feel and the ride, you get your money's worth. Let us know if you've run in the shoe and what you think about it in the comments section below. We spoke with Hoka no! <laughs> Can I hide behind the shoe? Stop telling me what to do.